Let's start with our star where you can see the large dark coronal hole and several bright active regions. Had two M-class flares top left at the incoming group, but all its CMEs so far are directed well away from Earth. There was a gorgeous bit of plasma jetting out from the leading region of the middle sunspot, luckily all going northward. But it's the sunspot group behind that taking our focus. The ones firmly on the Earth-facing portion of the sun have been quiet the last day, while the much more active incoming region appears complex and of considerable size. We'll see if the Earth-facing quiet takes care of that one over the coming days. Meanwhile, the solar wind amplification from this coronal hole is expected at Earth tomorrow or Monday and could produce geomagnetic storm activity, ending the calmer conditions we are seeing today. Next, a look at a Dansgaard Oeschger event during the last glacial period and finding only a 7 parts per million increase in carbon dioxide. For those new here, Dansgaard Oeschger events are 3, 5, up to 8 degrees of warming that can occur in as little as 40 years, which make the 1 degree of global warming over the last 200 years seem tame. What's more, carbon was virtually a non-factor. 7 parts per million? We are up 100 parts per million right now and haven't seen anything close to previous levels of warming in much more time. That brings us back to the glacial and interglacial cycles. Folks, while we are most focused on the 12,000 year geomagnetic cycle here at this channel, it would be foolish to ignore the fact that our current warm interglacial is out of time. They don't last more than 10 to 12,000 years and they never have. And we're right on time for that to end again now. This unfolding event of melting polar ice is set to trigger a massive cooling that may force the self-correcting planetary dynamics back into an ice age. A reset of the 100,000 year cycle, while not our usual focus, would be foolish to ignore right now.